everyone. Welcome to the New Teeth Now webinar. My name is Christine and this is Dr. Kirkpatrick. Tonight we'll be discussing all things dental implants. Welcome. We're so excited to have you here tonight. We also want you to ask as many live questions as you'd have. This is your chance to have your questions addressed by Dr. Kirkpatrick. If you are joining us from GoToWebinar, there should be a chat box on your lower right screen. You can directly type your questions on there. And if you're joining us from YouTube, you can type it right in the comment section and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. So let's get started tonight, Doc. Absolutely. How are you? I'm doing great, Christine. Great. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. It's going to be exciting today. So as Christine said, it is all about implants tonight. So I hope you're here for that because if you're not, you're going to be very bored. If you are, we're going to hopefully answer every question you have and get you a lot of information about what we can do with our New Teeth Now implant procedure. And we'll jump right in and get started. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm originally from Kentucky, did all my school at the University of Kentucky except for surgery, which I did at University of Florida in Jacksonville. And me and my partner, Dr. Richards, as well as the other oral surgeons that we work with, um, we all are board certified, which is very, very important when you're thinking about having this procedure done or, you know, for that matter, any procedure on your face or neck, you wanna make sure that the person that's treating you is board certified. It's kind of our way of making sure everybody's up to part and kind of on the same level with uh, treatment and surgical procedures. So dental implants, they are recognized by our national association as the best way to replace missing teeth. And what a dental implant looks like, for those of you that do not know, um, the little silver structure that's kind of threaded like a screw, that's the actual implant and then that goes into the bone, which gives us or your general dentist a foundation. Um, to put the tooth or the bridge, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight, um, secured on the implant. So the fixed upper hybrid, it's essentially a one piece horseshoe shaped bridge that gets screwed and attached to four to six implants on your upper jaw. And it's all one piece, it's screwed in, it doesn't come in and out. There's no wings that go underneath the cheeks or the lips, nothing covering the roof of the mouth. It's not replacing your natural teeth, but it's the closest thing we have to replace your natural teeth. Um, it's a little, you know, thicker, one piece, but looks very cosmetic and super strong, which essentially lets a patient who is missing all their teeth or needs to be missing all their teeth have an appliance in their mouth that they can use to chew with, eat with, and not be self-conscious about. So it's a really, really good thing and a good option for patients to have. The lower, we treat very similar. Typically, there's four to, in, four to six implants that we place on the lower jaw, and this is what they look like. They're kind of spaced out, pretty even throughout the lower jaw, covering um, the entire surface, which the lower bridge would then be screwed to. So tonight, we're gonna to go over a lot about these implants, and we're gonna show a lot of before and after pictures um, which I think do a really, really nice job at showing patients, you know, what we can accomplish with these implants. Um, a lot better than just me or you sitting here talking about. So we'll jump in. And we've got some videos, too, of kind of some of our patients uh, giving their testimony about what they went through and how it did change their life. And all these patients that you're going to see before and after pictures of or their video testimonials, they're actually patients that I've personally treated. So they're actually really live patients, not pictures that we pulled off the internet. So we'll kind of jump in um, with one of my patients. This is Beverly, and this is her before, and she was, you know, she presented like a lot of her patients do, um, very self-conscious about her appearance, and, you know, just unhappy with her teeth. She couldn't really eat the things she wanted to, and she was embarrassed when she did go out to eat with her family or friends, and found herself always covering her mouth. I have a top denture and it does not stay in place and it rubs my gums constantly and I don't take them out like I probably should either, you know, because I just refuse to walk around with nothing in. There's nothing like sitting around speaking with someone and having to be very careful that it doesn't fall and I just didn't want to have to worry about that anymore and the pain just being able to, to chew. You know, sometimes it's hard 
you're eating a carrot and it, it's very crunchy and you know when you bite down it hurts so I just think it's gonna be totally different because even when I was in my 20s I had bad teeth so it was always you know when you would smile <coughs> you would um cover your mouth it just becomes a habit and I guess as I've gotten older I've just learned how to smile without showing much to you. In the morning of the surgery I came in and the staff of new teeth now made me feel very comfortable. I was nervous and they talked to me and they tried to put me at ease. We went back and then she says, okay, I need you to count backwards and that was it. That's all I remember. And when I woke up, I was actually just, <laughs> I don't, I, it was amazing. It was, you look up and they're like, you're done, but it doesn't, it felt like I had just gone to sleep and I had no pain. I was amazed at the, the fact that I had no pain. They handed me the mirror and I was, I was just very happy. I was happy with the way my mouth looked. I was happy with the way everything was set up and I knew at that point that I didn't have to worry about taking anything out and it was like having a full set of, of natural teeth that was given to me that made it worth everything. At first, when I told my husband about the new teeth now, he was skeptical. He, he had no idea, and of course, you know, there is a price. You have to be ready to invest, but when you look at the investment you're making, that's in yourself. Once it was complete, and I was actually coming out of my shell, he could tell the difference in me. And he was glad at that point that we did it. And, when we were talking about it, he said, okay, whatever it takes. I have a coworker that's really good friends, but she knew the depth of it because she also knew that I had worn dentures for years. When I got back, she and I were in the office and we were talking and I was telling her about how the whole procedure went with new teeth now. And I guess I was still doing the covering my mouth when I, when I talked or when I smiled and, and she just took my hand and she said, stop. She said, your mouth looks amazing. Your face, everything, your smile is beautiful. Stop. It was hard to get to that point, but now I can actually smile and, and know that I don't have the same mouth that I had before, so it's amazing. New Teeth Now gave me the gift to be able to look in the mirror and actually see myself, to see the Beverly that I haven't seen in a very long time, the one that I've missed dearly and I'm glad is back. I feel like I am the Beverly I should be. All right, so you heard Beverly's story, and then there looking at her before and after pictures, you can see why it did make such a difference in her life. Not only from a pain and function standpoint, but just, you know, her self-consciously, she doesn't, doesn't even have to think about her teeth anymore, except how pretty they look. So um, just as a reminder also, as Christine mentioned earlier when we were starting the webinar, if you do have questions, like we love to answer them while we're here online. If you don't really want to ask them here, feel free to call tomorrow. You can call the uh, number on the screen that we'll kind of post randomly. Um, but definitely call in because we want you to get any, any information that you're after tonight. Absolutely. And we'll be more than happy to answer any questions live while we're here. So. Um, why do people do this new teeth now procedure that we do here? Um, number one should be to restore total body health. Um, number two, improve self-confidence. Definitely can help you bring out a smile. Um, improve your ability to eat, hopefully pain-free, because we see a lot of patients that can't really chew the foods that they want or eat the things that they want to because of either severe periodontal disease that makes it really painful when eating like sweets, sugary, acidic foods. Um, you are asleep during the entire procedure for those of you with dental phobias, which we see a lot of patients that do have kind of that fear of the dentist, which may be one of the reasons that they are in this situation and would need a procedure like this. And then the post-operative pain level afterwards will surprise you. Most of our patients will tell us that you know, Advil or Tylenol, they're fine with after, and that helps them through the entire recovery. We do give you, or 
a narcotic if you need that. And but most of our patients just tell us that maybe they were scared and they took one, but they didn't know if they needed it. They took it anyway, and then they didn't need any other narcotic um, throughout the rest of the recovery. So it is a pretty consistent story that we hear from our patients that it's not that bad going through the recovery with this. Um, but then we do have patients that you know need a little extra TLC, and we offer that and give that to them for the ones that need it. So the oral body connection, you know, for one of the reasons, you know, I told you the number one reason to do this is to restore your total body health. One of my favorite quotes that I've kind of always said in these webinars and um, in-person seminars when I give those is the mouth is the gateway to a pretty awesome creation. And if you think about that, it's the first thing that encounters the air you breathe. It's the first thing that encounters the food that you put in your body. So it's, there's a lot of things that pass through your mouth. And if your mouth is full of bacteria from bad periodontal disease or a bunch of decayed teeth or infections in the mouth, then you're chewing your food and all those infections. So when you swallow that, no doubt, some of that bacteria gets in your stomach and that enters the body that way. The other thing is when you breathe in, if you've got a mouthful of periodontal disease, you breathe in some of those bacteria that can go into your lungs and can further exacerbate, like if you have COPD or bad asthma, that can stimulate and cause those disease processes to be worse. So it is, you know, the mouth is actually part of the body. <laughs> you know, and some people don't really think about it like that. And even primary care doctors in the past, they would give you a really quick look over, like put the little popsicle stick in your mouth, open up and say, ah, and that's about it. Now they really are teaching primary care doctors and more in, me in the medical world that you really need to look in patients' mouths. And if you see red, swollen, bleeding gum tissue or a bunch of bad teeth, you need to really talk to your patients about being referred out to a general dentist or seeking the care of a general dentist. Because the periodontal disease, there is a big connection, as you can see when they put up the, next sc the same screen. Periodontal disease definitely has a huge connection with the rest of the body. One of the big ones is your heart, your cardiovascular system. So we get called a lot to the hospital for, from the cardiothoracic surgeons. They're going to be doing a heart procedure on a patient, and they will not do that procedure in a lot of cases because the patient has severe periodontal disease because they don't want to go in and put like, do like a heart valve replacement and have that valve have a really high chance of getting infected with the same bugs from the periodontal disease. So they'll want us to clear the patient or take out all their teeth or help get rid of the infection before they'll do a life-saving procedure. So that tells you how important it is. The other, you know, the other things listed, um, with you know the digestive diseases that's chewing the bacteria and swallowing them in your stomach but a lot of these you can read and some of them are really scary some you don't really think about that much but increases your risk of developing diabetes increases your risk of having a stroke you know there's a lot of things on here that are scary on this list that are real connections with periodontal disease and the rest of the body but it all boils down to that your body is constantly fighting a low-grade infection which can reduce the effectiveness of your immune system, which can ultimately shorten your life expectancy. And that's real. Yep. Oh, actually, Dr. Kirkpatrick, it looks like we have some questions. Earlier, Perfect. you mentioned um, being asleep during the procedure. A patient had a question in regards to, um, she's never had anesthesia before, and she's kind of asking, do we have the people that have experience with it? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do, we have all of the above. We, everyone here that would be treating you from a uh, surgical anesthesia standpoint, we're all ACLS certified, which is the same as in the hospital and any outpatient surgery um, centers, and are having a separate, totally dedicated anesthesia team is the safest way possible to do this. We're also in constant uh, conversations with you about your medical history. And then if you have a primary care doctor or any specialist that you see, then we, all, we are always in contact with our offices. We get basic blood work and an EKG on essentially everyone that would be going under general anesthesia. 
we just we try to do everything we can above and beyond the gold standards that you would see at any other outpatient surgery center just to try to make it as safe and possible as it can be for you know any type of surgery that's awesome and then we have two additional questions is a patient wanted to know if how many visits are there for a patient that's traveling to us from another state oh, that's another great question it's like these questions were planted with yes. you guys um, so for out-of-state patients we have a lot of patients that come in from you know different states um, we've actually treated a patient from all 50 states that's awesome and that is awesome um, we did our last state from North Dakota recently. So we were super excited about that. Now we can claim that we have treated a patient from all 50 states. And we have patients that come in from, you know, out of country as well. Um, just being in Florida or close to the Bahamas and some of the islands, we have patients that come in from the islands. So we do kind of have a system set up to where if you're coming from out of state, we try to make it as convenient and easy as possible for you. We have a lot of conversations with you before you make that first trip down here to see us. So from a medical clearance standpoint, the labs and the EKG that I was talking about, you know, if it's something that you're serious about coming and trying to set up and have this procedure and you want to try to condense everything as much as possible, then we would have the medical clearances and all that done before you get here. But essentially what we can do with number of appointments is we can set it up to where you would fly in I would see you for a consult. We would take impressions that same day that you come in for the consult, and we could possibly have the surgery day two days later. So you fly in, consult, surgery two days later, and then I would really like to see you somewhere around seven days after, before you go back home. Just to make sure that you're healing okay, no infection, and answer any questions that you would have before you get on your way back to your home state. And then we would discuss how you look at that visit when I would want to see you back. But typically, if everything's going like it should, which it usually does, then I would see you somewhere about four to six weeks after you leave to go back home. We'd see you four to six weeks back, and then if everything looks good at that appointment, we see you for a final check and to start your final teeth process about five and a half, six months after surgery. So somewhere around, it can be done in around four appointments before you start your final teeth, which we haven't even gotten to that yet about the, the process with your temporary teeth and your final set of teeth and the materials they're made of, which we are going to get to that in a few slides. Gotcha. But that's a great question. Perfect. And then another, it looks like another question came in, Doc. There is a patient that doesn't have any teeth on the top and then neither on the bottom or the back. It says that she cannot get any implants because she doesn't has lack of bone and she wants to know if we can help her out. And then also how often do we see periodontal disease return after the placement of implants? So, yeah, I mean, I would say with in your, your personal situation with having upper teeth or a few teeth on the lower, it would definitely, we could probably help you with this, if you need this new teeth now procedure. Um, it's a little different if you're having single implants placed to restore just a couple teeth here and there. And that I would urge you, especially if you're out of state, there's no reason for you to travel here. You would, if you don't have enough bone in an area for a one implant, then you, you're gonna need a bone graft. If you don't have enough bone for a couple implants here and there, and you're going to do everything in one jaw, then I've never seen a patient that I could not treat with our new teeth now procedure because you didn't have enough bone. The only reason that I've had to turn a patient away in the past is because of a medical reason. Gotcha. If their primary care said that they wasn't really candid to undergo general anesthesia for you know for their procedure, um, then you wouldn't be a you know, you wouldn't be a candidate for this. But from a bone standpoint, I've never had a patient that I couldn't treat just because they didn't have enough bone. So if that's one of the things you've been told in the past and you think that you'd be a candidate to have all your teeth replaced in one jaw or all of the teeth in both jaws, then I would recommend that you come in and see me for a consult because I think it'd be well worth your time. As far as periodontal disease returning, um, it possible, yes. Um, Common, no. So the bugs that cause periodontal disease, they're still present 
in your mouth because they're normal bacteria that live in our mouths. But the ones that cause the periodontal disease usually get intertwined in the ligament that holds the tooth to the bone. And that's the periodontal ligament, thus the term periodontal disease. And once you remove the tooth, that ligament comes out, periodontal disease is cured. You can still get bacteria that get in between the bone and the implant, but it is very rare for that to happen. So it's not common for us to see periodontal disease return around implants. But that's a good question. And then we'll, we'll move on through some slides, and as questions come in, we'll kind of stop and answer them as a group, just like we did there. You got it, Doc. So periodontal disease, what it looks like, well, here's kind of the nitty gritty or the down and dirty of the periodontal disease. You can see on the picture where the teeth are, all those yellow, darker, brownish um, colors between the gum and the crowns of the teeth, that's the roots of the teeth that you can see. And you're seeing those roots because the bone has resorbed, the gum has receded, and it, you have a bunch of exposed roots. Those exposed roots are what can be very painful with this process with sweet foods, acidic drinks, and even air breathing in. If it rubs, comes through and hits those root surfaces, it can be very sensitive because the roots are not protected with the enamel. And the enamel is that white you know, structure that you see that on the, the tooth part that you would see and use um, from your, like your normal crown. The root's not protected with enamel. It's, it should be protected with bone. So when you lose the bone because of periodontal disease, then the roots are exposed and that's what causes the problem, the, usually the pain. So the other picture on that slide, if you look at that, you can see the implants. And this is the same day that I did the procedure. Took the teeth out, put the implants in, and those are impression pins that we were using to help guide the lab and attaching their bridge to their implants because everything's custom. There's not like a stock tray we have, small, medium, large. Everything is made individually for every patient. And that those little posts that you see sticking up, those come out when we screw the teeth in at the end of the day. And but that you know that picture is showing all the teeth out, periodontal disease 100% completely gone, all in one day, Amazing. which is a really, really cool thing about this procedure. And this slide shows the before with the teeth still present and the periodontal disease, and then the after, and this is a couple months later, where the gum tissue has healed beautifully around those, um, what they're called abutments, those little connectors that you can see there. Those are what the teeth get screwed to, and that is a totally healthy environment. And on this particular patient, there's his before and after picture, and just an amazing difference, not only in the appearance of his teeth, but taking him from a mouthful of periodontal disease to a completely healthy mouth with beautiful teeth that he can see, you know, like the appearance, chew foods with, and not be in pain. That's the goal with our New Teeth Now procedure. So if you wanna be truly healthy, you must think about your mouth and restore your oral health. So who's a candidate for this procedure? Well, if you have no teeth or you're unhappy with your dentures, definitely you're a candidate. If you have a mouthful of bad teeth or you have severe periodontal disease, 100% you're a candidate for this procedure. And you know, like we talked about earlier with the question that came in, if you've ever been told by a general dentist, even another oral surgeon or any dental specialist that you do not have enough bone for implants, you need to come see me for a consult. Uh, because we've got some different ways that we can bypass where patients don't have enough bone, especially in the upper jaw by using some that we're going to talk about a little bit um, later called the zygomatic implant. Your zygoma is your cheekbone, so we can anchor implants into the cheekbone. They're called zygomatic implants going into your zygoma, and that allows us to bypass where you don't have enough bone in the upper jaw which eliminates the need for bone grafting, which is a huge benefit to a lot of patients. Because instead of going through possibly taking bone from your hip or your lower leg um, and putting it, you know, raising your sinus and doing the bone graft, waiting eight or nine months for that to heal and hopefully enough bone heals where you can have traditional implants, we can totally bypass, eliminate the need from doing the bone graft, 
You don't have to wait on the bone graft to heal, and we can do this in one day, which is a big, big advantage for patients that would need this type of procedure. So another before and after, um, one of my favorite patients of all time, and it's, you know, it's, it's hard to make that list yeah. too because I like all, all of our patients that we see here, but you know, he just had a really, really outgoing personality. He was very skeptical about having this procedure done. Um, if I remember right, his, he was wanting to redo some things in his house, but he needed this, something done with his mouth. And his family talked him into coming to see me for a consult. He came in, he found out that he was a candidate for this procedure, and he decided, thankfully, to do the procedure first and not really focus on his house, the little you know, things that he had going on in, to renovate in his house. So he did this procedure, and that's his before and after. And it just made a huge, he had a super outgoing personality before, but it was really outgoing, made him want to talk, smile to everybody. He would come in to our waiting room, which is the theater that you can see behind Christine and I. But he would come in and he'd be smiling and he'd have matching shirt and hat at every appointment. And he'd be going up to everybody telling them, like, just smiling, you know, wanting to show his new teeth oh, off, yeah, tell awesome. him about what he did and what, what we did for him here. So it was pretty cool to be a part of that journey uh, with him. But that, you know, his before and after, that kind of says everything. And then this lady, you know, if you have dentures, she, her before picture, which is on the left, looks good. You know, her teeth don't look that bad, but they're, they're fake. They're a denture that comes in and out. And it drove her crazy. She hated the process of taking her teeth out at night, setting them on the nightstand, having to brush them and clean them, you know, under a sink. So she wanted to see if she was a candidate for implants. She'd been told in the past she didn't have enough bone in the upper jaw, like a lot of her patients are. She came to see us for a consult. She had plenty of bone for our new teeth now procedure. So we did that, and then you could see her after picture um, on the right. So that is a screwed-in bridge that she brushes, toothbrush, toothpaste, goes and have that professionally cleaned every six months, just like you and I do with her natural teeth, or you probably do. I'm kind of behind on my things. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but she just, you take care of these like you do natural teeth, which kind of gives you that part of life back to where you're not thinking about teeth that come in and out or anything covering the roof of the mouth or, you know, just all the bad things that come along with a partial denture or a complete denture. Like this lady, complete upper denture. She had two lower implants placed um, years ago. They were starting to fail. They were used as a, as kind of support for a snap-on denture. She was having a horrible time with her denture fitting because she had lost so much bone in both the upper and lower jaws, especially the upper. She was pouring in denture glue, trying to make it set and stay in her mouth when she'd be out talking or trying to eat. But after every meal, she'd have to go back to the bathroom, pour in more denture glue or the little strips, glue it back in, and it just, it was driving her crazy. She had seen multiple um, specialists before she came in here and they all told her like, look, you've got too much bone loss. We can't put implants. Even bone grafting is probably not an option. And she came in and, you know, I kind of looked at her scan and I didn't know at the time that she'd been told by other people that she couldn't have implants because she didn't have enough bone. Or I didn't know that she was, you know, had even seen another provider for an opinion before me. So I kind of come in, I do an oral exam, look at her CT scan, we're looking at it together, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of bone loss in your upper, but with the zygoma implants, pretty straightforward. And she was kind of looking at me like, are you sure? Because the three other people I've seen before you said they couldn't do it. And obviously we did. You can see her after picture here. So we were able to put in the zygomatic implants, anchor her upper bridge, and she had a fixed bridge that didn't come in and out wasn't covering the roof of the mouth, and no more denture glue, which totally changed that part of her daily routine for the better. You know, she could just kind of forget about her teeth coming in and out and all the things that you would do with the denture. So zygomas have really changed the game, not only for us as the surgeons, but for patients who would be receiving a treatment like this. 
like this young lady, came in from the northeastern U.S., and she had tried to find, she knew she didn't have enough bone, she was told she didn't have enough bone, she needed extensive bone grafting, or at least she was told about zygomatic implants, which is rare. Um, but she found us on the internet, thankfully, and came in for a consult just to see if we could help her with the zygomas. And, you know, you're going to see in a second her post-op x-ray. But her bridge, her teeth doesn't look, they don't look terrible there. Um, but it's one big horseshoe-shaped bridge on just a few remaining teeth that she has. The bridge started to fail, and you could literally take it with your fingers and move it up and down. Almost take it completely out of her mouth. Oh, so nice. it was failing. She knew it was failing. She knew she had to do something, and she did not want dentures. So she came in for the consult. Obviously, she had enough bone, and this is what we did for her. That's her after picture with her new bridge in, and those angled implants that you see in the back, those are the zygomatic implants, and they basically bypass where you don't have a lot of bone in the upper jaw, anchor into the cheekbones, and give you a ton of support to be able to have a bridge like this screwed in and throw away the denture. That idea. is amazing. Yeah. So zygomas, this little video kind of shows what they look like from what we would see in surgery putting these things in. So they look just like a regular implant, just like you see there. They just anchor in a different location. So they're a little longer because they've got to kind of reach out and touch the cheekbone. But you can see the bridge going in, the, the titanium screws holding the bridge and attaching it to the implants. And that's essentially how this process works. So in severe cases in the upper jaw, where a patient really doesn't have any bone in the upper jaw, then we would do something called the quad zygomatic procedure, where we would put four zygomas, two on each side, and anchor them. And a lot of times, there's only enough room to do just those four zygomatic implants. But occasionally, like this patient, if you've got bone anywhere that I can find to use, I'm going to use it. So, you know, she had a little bit of bone that I could put a single traditional implant in the front, which is just kind of added bonus support. So it's not needed if you read the books, but I try to put as much support as I can to where at the end of the day, I feel really good about what we've done surgically. And hopefully we never have to operate on the same patient again. That's kind of the goal. And now would be a good time if we yes, have other yes, questions. Yes, yes we do, Doc. Speaking of zygomatic implants, a patient is wondering if they do have zygomatic implants done on them, okay. would they have bone loss later on? So that's a, good, that's a good question, but usually with any implant, whether it's a zygomatic implant or a traditional implant, anything that's in your bone, whether it's a tooth root or an implant, that gives your body a reason to hang on to that bone. So by replacing except for periodontal disease. If you've got infection around your teeth or your tooth roots, then the bone's gonna shrink away and melt away. But if it's a healthy tooth root or a healthy implant, then the bone has a good reason to hang around. So by replacing teeth roots with implants, then that gives your body a reason to not only not resorb the bone, but it gives your body a reason to hang on to the bone. So it usually makes the bone stay. It doesn't really, nothing can make that bone regrow that we have yet. Now that may be coming in the future with stem cells, yep. who knows? We, we may get there and my gut feeling, I'm sure we will one day. But now we don't really have anything to make you regrow bone, but definitely healthy implants can keep you from resorbing more bone away. So that would be kind of how I'd look at any implant, zygomatic implant or traditional implants. Gotcha, Doc. Thank you for answering that. Um, another person that's watching is also asking, do we take Medicaid or any other forms of insurance? So we don't really take any form of insurance, whether it's Medicaid, Medicare, or traditional dental insurance or medical insurance. We have, we've tried in the past, it just doesn't, they, they won't, won't cover implants. Yep. So Got it's it. just, we don't take it because they don't cover it. 
And then it looks like if one of the bridges break, are they able to call the office to have another one mailed to them, or do they need to go to someone local if it's an out-of-state patient? So it depends on um, where you're out in the process. If it's your temporary bridge, then a lot of times we would have you to come in just to make sure that nothing's going on with the implants, because if you're in your temporary, then you're still in the recovery and the healing process where your bone is fusing to the implants. If it's in your final stage where you're in your zirconia, it totally depends on who your provider is in your home state that we could talk with. Most of the time, we would like to see you back here um, just to make sure that nothing's going on with the implants and put the new bridge in for you here. You can definitely have those, which by the way, that is super rare yeah. for that to happen, where especially one of the zirconia bridges would break and we would be in that type of situation. Has it happened? Yeah, we've done thousands and thousands of these. So once you, you know, you do enough of these things, you're gonna see a lot of different things that happen, but that is extremely rare for that to happen. Um, but in all those cases where the bridge breaks, we would like to see you to make sure that the implants are okay. But if you do have a general dentist that you've known for a long time, you know that they're kind of well-versed in implants, then I don't have a problem with them taking care of them for you afterwards uh, for regular routine maintenance and cleanings. and all. Like you don't have to come here for that every six months. Uh, but if something breaks, that's kind of a different story. Like, we would definitely want to see you for that. Yep, got it. And it looks like we have two more questions. There is a patient that has extreme dental fear and an ultra-sensitive gag reflex. Is our staff able to handle that? Yeah, especially with the fear, definitely. We see that, I mean, literally every, every week. <laughs> so that's something that we could definitely help you through. And with the uh, gag reflex, there's a lot of different tricks of the trade that a restorative team in the lab has to take impressions. But one of the things that we look at with this is there's certain things that you have to have to do this procedure. If you can't get an impression, we can't make your teeth. The surgery we could do because you're, put, you're totally put to sleep, but to get your, where your muscles are working properly, where you're opening and closing your jaws, we need you awake for a lot of that process. But there's a lot of tricks that a restorative team has that, I mean, we have a lot of people that have a gag reflex. So there's, and I don't really know of anyone that they've tried and they couldn't do the impressions because of a gag reflex. So come in and see us for a consult and we can talk about it and see how bad that is. But I don't think we've ever had anybody that we couldn't get that on. Good question. Oh, it looks like our audience is really hanging on to, on to our presentation, Doc, because Perfect. she wanted to know about final teeth. Is there anything that she cannot eat with her final set of teeth? So final set of teeth, essentially you think of those just like you would your natural teeth. So if you had all your natural healthy teeth still in your mouth, whatever you can eat with them, what a dentist would recommend you eating with your natural teeth, you can definitely eat with these zirconia teeth. So can you go out and chew, you know, open a bottle top with your zirconia bridge? <laughs> no, I've kind of always joked that I would put a bottle opener you know, on one of the back teeth for certain patients, <laughs> but, uh, just for a party <laughs> trick. But, but no, you're, you know, anything that you can normally eat with your natural teeth, you can eat with zirconia teeth. Perfect. So there's really no restrictions on that. In, in the temporary teeth, yes. You are restricted, and we talk about that. It's not a huge deal, but until you get into your final teeth, anything you can easily cut with a fork, that's my rule of thumb, that's what you need to do. And the reason for that, it's not really, well, I mean, it's, we don't want you to break your teeth because you're eating something too heavy on the temporary acrylic teeth, but I don't want you to damage the implants or cause your bone not to fuse with the implant. That's the number one reason we put you on the soft diet. Got it. Okay. All right. So we will keep rolling through the rest of these slides and we'll stop in a little bit and entertain more questions. So we actually get this question a lot and I, I didn't understand 
why patients would ask that because they're fake. <laughs> but I kind of get it because they do look like yeah. real teeth. So, you know, patients will ask, well, am I ever going to need a root canal on one of these? Like, are you, do you have to root canal an implant? And the answer is no, because there's really, well, there's no root there, but there's the nerve in the blood vessel that runs inside of the tooth root, which is the reason that you'd have a root canal done to clean that out. They're not there anymore. So you don't need a root canal on our implants. They never decay, so you don't need like a cavity filled or treated on the, um, on the implant teeth like you can see here. You know, so they, they never decay. They're very easy to maintain. You brush them, toothbrush, toothpaste, and you go get your, you know, every six month cleanings at a general dentist office. The cool thing about the cleanings with these, um, these art full arch bridges is you're not sitting there while the dentist or hygienist is cleaning your teeth. And I had a patient tell me today, she has the full arch implant bridge, her husband does not. So they were both getting their teeth cleaned at one of our restorative dental offices that's, you know, he does a lot of these cases with us, but he also does regular dentistry. So she was like, you know, it just wasn't fair. Like their teeth were outside of their mouth and they were cleaning them kind of in the back. And he was just kind of sitting there. And I was sitting there having my teeth scraped on by the hygienist and you know, he's just kind of sitting like looking at me. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's about as easy as it can be, especially so for the people who are scared of the dentist or don't really want to go to the dentist or have a fear of their teeth being scraped on, this is as easy as it gets. Because to take them out, there's no numbing medicine or needles or anything like that. They just literally go in and take the little screws out, bridge comes off, they take them to the back, clean the teeth, screw them back in, and you leave. So convenient. Very convenient. So, and we've tried to make the whole process here at this office super convenient because, you know, it's, it's designed, the whole process is designed for patients. And to do that, one of the things, you know, that patients used to complain in the past, before we built this center here, is that they'd come in and be like, well, you know, I did see somebody else for this, and they're going to do the surgery in this office, and then the, I had to go to the lab to let them look at my mouth and face to pick the color of the teeth and show me some different teeth. And they had to go to the, a dental office to have them make the teeth. And it's just kind of going from bouncing from office to office to office. So we have everything here under one roof. And to us, it's kind of just normal, you know, run of the mill stuff. That's just the way we do it. But for patients, it is a huge benefit for our patients to be able to come here and have everything here under one roof. It makes us different from most other places. Is we're all board certified, we talked about that. The experience of the team, I mean that basically, our surgery, this, both me and my partner that do the surgeries and our restorative dentist have been doing this for, I mean, I've been here 15 years doing pretty much dedicated to this procedure. And the same with our restorative team, the same with our in-house lab, and our anesthesia uh, providers. You're under general anesthesia to make it as safe and easy for you as possible. Having everything here under one roof, from the consults here, the restorative team is here, your surgery's here, the lab is here, so your teeth are made here. Like they're not sent out to China and come back or to a lab in California, which is the way it used to be. And a lot of parts would come from another country or another state. We'd send the impressions and have the teeth sent here. And then you open the box and it's almost like, like, like a Christmas present. You open it up and you're like, you can't wait to get in it because you want to know what it looks like. Is it really what we were expecting to get back? Did they do the quality control there? Is it, is it what the patient wanted? Is it the right color? Well, now we don't have to guess on that because everything's here upstairs in the lab. So we, we can see the stuff before it even comes out of the lab. So if there's anything that we need to tweak, we can do that. And, you know, it's just, it means the world a difference for, it doesn't really affect me and Dr. Richards from the surgical side to have that. But for the restorative team, it is hands down the best thing ever for them. 
And Dr. Dibbs, who's one of our restorative um, team members, he has a little short video clip that I'm going to play for you all in a minute. But it kind of goes through that process of what it means for him and you as the patient to have that here in this office. So back to the differentiators, the zygomatic implants, not a lot of people are trained in or even do that if they are trained in them. And the final teeth being in zirconia, hands down, strongest, most cosmetic material that you can have to make these bridges. So the all under one roof, we kind of hit on that, the consult, impressions, surgery, having the teeth made here in our in-house lab, and your final teeth in zirconia, everything is done here, and everything is done surgical-wise in one day. So your procedure's done in just one day. The temporary teeth, we kind of talked about that. They're made out of acrylic, um, and there's a lot of good reasons for that that I don't really think is you know, appropriate for this, but it's, they're just easy to adjust when you're in your recovery. And then the final teeth being in zirconia, we try to use the best material and be on the leading edge of what is available for this type of procedure, and that's the best. So for your consultation, which would be your first visit here, um, we obtain an, a CAT scan, which is called an iCAT. It's just a CT scan of your face that you see with me when you're here. So we look at the CT scan together. So you're looking at what I'm looking at. You're seeing where I'm, I would put your implants and showing you where your best bone is. And if, if you don't have good bone in your upper jaw and I would need to do a zygomatic implant, you're not just trusting me on telling you that you need it. You're seeing what I'm measuring. So you know from the scan. And it's super simple to see because a lot of it's in 3D. So you can see why you need the zygomatic implant or not. And I think that helps patients understand exactly what I would need to do to get patients to their goal of having a full arch set of implant bridge teeth. So our implant coordinators who you will meet when you come here, um, all three very experienced in, in all aspects of this. And what makes them very good at what they do is both Shauna and Allie were surgery assistants. So they've kind of been in the back and they've seen multiple of these procedures. And now they're helping patients through the initial stage with the, with the consult and kind of talking to you on the phone, working through the pre-visit stuff before you even come in for the consult. And definitely with the consult, they spend a good amount of time going over the entire process with you. And that's to have someone like that with their knowledge base Talking to you about this procedure is just, you know, it, it, it's, it makes our job a lot easier because when we come in, they pretty much talked about everything that I would talk about. And I kind of start going over a little bit and the patient kind of looked at me like, oh yeah, Sha yeah, Shauna told me that. Shauna showed me that. Oh, Mara showed me that. She already showed me where the implants would go. And I'm kind of like, well, I mean, am I even needed here? Like, I mean, I promise they can't do the surgery like I can do. But, um, but, th but that's really reassuring to me that they've done a really good job walking patients through the process before they even get to me. So the patients are ready for this. And, you know, and Mara was a dental hygienist, so she's got that background, which is also extremely important when, you know, walking a patient through the consult in the initial stages. A restorative team, same thing. These guys have been doing this for many years. And, you know, with, especially with Dibs and Nafala, they, if you add Dr. Nafala, Dr. Dibs, and Dr. Sorrento's numbers of patients that just those three guys have completed this procedure on, if you added all those together, the number of patients that they've treated with one of these full arch implant cases, I would, I think, the rest of the country, all included, would be hard-pressed to add up to the amount that they've done. And that's saying a lot, because that's literally what we do every day, pretty much five days a week, and what we've done for years that way. So they've just got extreme amount of experience, which is invaluable when they're trying to work through different patients, because everybody's different. You know what? 
what you would like for your implant bridge versus what I would like for my implant bridge, it's probably going to be different. And so they, you know, they've got a lot of experience to try to get patients exactly what they want. One of the things that really sets Florida Dental Implants apart from uh, other offices that are doing full mouth implant reconstruction, I have my own laboratory here on site that myself and the other restorative doctors are able to use. This is invaluable. Having the ability to work so closely with my lab gives me the ability to better help my patients with the emotional side of it as well. A large number of the patients that, that come to us for treatment have had severe dental problems for many, many, many years, sometimes dating back to childhood. Because of the emotional concerns that they have, we really have to spend the time with the patient. That You can't rush anything. We need to have ample opportunity to have questions asked and answered. Having my own laboratory here on site, this is invaluable, not only in terms of having the control over the quality of the product that we're making, but the ability to, if I've got a question with the patient about, can we make this change? Is this going to be feasible? I can go across the hall, get one of my lab technicians, and all of my lab technicians have been doing this for many, many years, bring them across the hall, and they can talk to the patient themselves. So we eliminate the need for me to try to interpret the patient's concerns and questions and needs in a phone call or in a note, they can speak directly to the patient. It was so important to me to have everything under one roof. There's no waiting. That is the advantage of having the lab on site. And they are so proud of their work that they come out to see the product. These are not regular people with regular jobs. These are master artisans that create. They truly are artists. And they're creating beautiful smiles. It's like nothing I've ever experienced. And I don't know of any other office that's like this. OK, so here you can see my surgical staff and the same with all the other pictures that I've shown you about some of our staff here. These three surgical assistants, they have been with me for many, many years, and they're all very experienced. They make, it, they make my job so much easier and efficient where they, just, they pretty much know what I'm going to be doing next. Sometimes before, I, they think they know before I know, but they don't. They, they really don't, but I'll let them think that sometimes. But no, they, they are very, very good and to the point that it just, it's a, it's a total team effort. It's not just like the restorative team. It's not just me or Dr. Richards as the surgical side. It takes everybody and to have a really good surgical staff in the OR with assisting. It just, I mean, it's like just one team with a bunch of hands doing a lot of different things at one time to make it extremely accurate and efficient to where patients are treated, you know, in the most efficient, safe way. To, at the end of the day, we put them to sleep, we do the procedure, we wake them up, put their teeth in at the, you know, toward the end of the day and they get to go home with what they wanted. And it takes pretty much the village to do that. Um, and we are very happy with the people we work with here and fortunate to have them. So the anesthesia portion, you know, you're totally under general anesthesia, and then when you wake up, you go to a private recovery room, like you see here in this picture, and we have, you know, there's someone there with you at all times, making sure that you're okay, that you're not in any pain, getting you something to eat. Usually, you know, the, the food of choice is usually an Italian ice at first, just because it's cold, people usually like the taste of it, and it's something good to get in their mouth when they just woke up. And then, you know, they help get the post-op x-ray, which I uh, get on everybody so I can see where the implants yeah. are and show you where your implants are. And I think a lot of that is, I mean, I love to see kind of my work at the end yeah. of the day, 
um, and grade myself, but I love for patients to see what they've got. And I always tell them in the consult, like literally everywhere where I just drew where your implant's going, on your post-op x-ray, when we're done you know, after surgery, you could literally lay it on top of this where I drew in the implants and everywhere you see where I've drawn an implant, there's gonna be an actual implant. And I always try to get to that goal. <laughs> I want to hit that mark, you know. Um, so, but, you know, this slide was just meant to show you that you're never left alone. There's always someone there, usually multiple people actually, um, coming in, checking on you, making sure that you're doing okay. And you're hanging out, recovering until the lab ha finishes your teeth that we screw in at the end of the day. And when I talk about a village, there we are. So it's, there's a lot of us that make this happen, um, and it takes everybody. And we're very fortunate to have every one of these people that you see in the picture. So one, I think this is one last video patient that I'm gonna show you, um, but it's, it's, Gloria is pretty special and unique that she originally lost some teeth due to an accident when she was in her teenage years. And then that led to just ongoing dental problems from the teeth that were broken in the accident to trying to fix them and it failing. And she ultimately had something that she'd been told she needed have just have everything taken out in a denture. And she did not want dentures. And she came here for a consult and I'm gonna let her tell her story. Um, but her before and after is something special. Well, we look forward to seeing it. The car accident I had was tragic and lost everything, just all down to nothing, like gums. And after that, I went to a dentist and I got a plate just to fit up there. And then I would use adhesive to hold the upper plate to keep it in place. And I would have to do that like every two to three hours. Go in the bathroom, put my adhesive on and sort of stay up there to keep it from, it fell out a couple of times, but I was like, surprisingly hit it, you know, and just kept my mouth closed. I spent a year looking for a dentist that would do what I really needed done and right now. And I found Dr. Kirkpatrick. So then I came over at seven o'clock in the morning and uh, about four o'clock, I was going home and I had teeth and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Now I'm able to chew my food, I'm able to taste my food, I'm able to swallow my food and smile. I can smile as big and pretty as I want to. And I thank Dr. Kirkpatrick for making that happen. All right, so you can see Gloria's before and after picture and just an amazing transformation. Because if you look at the before picture, I always ask everybody to try, give me a smile in your before. And it's not, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but we use those before pictures in surgery when I'm doing the procedure to look at like lip line, how, how muscular your cheeks are to lift your lips up, how far, because some people smile and they have a really gummy smile. Some people smile and you, you never see any of their upper teeth hardly. Um, or there's some people like Regis Feldman, if people know who, remember who he was, that when he smiles, you only see his lower teeth. He doesn't show any upper teeth. So everyone's different. And I do use that before picture, but with Gloria, you know, she was very self-conscious. She was like, I don't smile. And I'm like, well, I need something. So <laughs> she just kind of made that face at me and that was her before. <laughs> and then, but you compare that to her after, just incredible Amazing. transformation for her. So our new teeth now process, you know, this is essentially a slide that sums up from start to finish. You come in for your consult, you have pre-op and impressions, and during that appointment, that's when you're picking out what you want your temporary teeth to ideally look like. Then you have the new teeth now surgery, and then you have all of the post-op appointments, and then they start making the final teeth. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it just goes into the maintenance. So that every six months, somewhere six to seven months, you go in and get your teeth cleaned a couple times a year. The same way that we do with um, our natural teeth. So we try to make it as easy as possible and it's essentially these six steps. 
and then resources and things that a lot of people can use. And I hear this a lot in consults where a patient will tell me like, you know, before I came in, I've been thinking about this for the last year and a half. And I've watched every webinar that you and Dr. Richards have done on YouTube. I've gone to all your social media. I've been all over your website. You know, pretty much every night going to bed, I get on your website and kind of check it out and, you know, read another section or watch another before and after testimonial. And I think all those are super important. Kind of the same with this webinar. That the more information you can get as a patient or a potential patient, the better. And for that matter, I even I strongly encourage second opinions. And a lot of people are like, you want, you want me to go see somebody else? Sure I do. I want you to go see as many people as it takes for you to get the information you need to be as comfortable as you can with what options you have. Because I mean, this is what I do. This is what I feel is the best yep. treatment option for somebody to replace all their teeth. But it's not the only way. I'm sure other people can get into all the big elaborate bone grafting and you know the couple years of treatments. But for me to be able to do like a zygomatic implant case, and not have to put patients through bone grafting and not do, you know, certain procedures to get you ready for the implants. That's what I think is the best. So, but it's not the only way. So if there's, if you're questioning or you're just not sure, go get a second opinion. Go see somebody before you come see me. That's my favorite time because <laughs> now, and I love to not know that you've gone to see someone else uh, because I'll go through my procedure and you're kind of like, you're sure it's going to be that simple. I'm like, I think, it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. We do this every day. So, um, you know, we want you to have as much information as you can to make the best decision for you individually. So a lot of these resources, you know, with YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, um, even Snapchat, we've got pretty much all the social media avenues that you can take and look at to get some information. So I think now would be a great time to answer more questions because yeah, I heard some come in. Yes, absolutely, Doc. We have quite a few number of questions tonight. Perfect. So a patient was wondering, um, do we keep the impressions on file in case something happens during a maintenance appointment or if anything happens out of our control? Yes, we do. So we're try everything is pretty much digital. So everything's scanned. So we literally have digital copies of everything. And then we do keep... Um, like your old temporaries for a while, you know, until we get, and if we're starting to throw that away, then it's, you're so far into your finals that you would never ever need those. And with the finals, we have the entire process scanned. So it's basically a milling machine, push a button and it would mill the bridge again. So yeah, we do, we do keep what we need. Um, for you to have all this stuff that you would need if something happened. Perfect. Awesome, Doc. The next question that came in is a patient was wondering, are you able to build her upper and lower lip back up if she has the quad zygoma, zygomas done to avoid looking sunken in? Yeah, so there's a lot of things that go into losing lip support, having too much lip support, um, collapsing cheeks and lips. So these... A lot of times people lose lip support or they feel like their lips have collapsed in because they've lost bone, which holds the teeth. And if you lose all that volume, then there's nothing kind of holding the cheeks and the lips out, so they collapse in. When you reestablish the correct position of your teeth, then that usually reorients your lip back where it needs to be. Um, if it's not exactly where you know, where it was when you were 16, then there's other cosmetic things that can be done to kind of help enhance that. Uh, but we usually, we recommend never jumping into a cosmetic procedure with fillers or anything like that until at least after you get your final teeth in. And then if you're not, you know, you still want more lip support than what the final teeth give you, then that's when you would look at a procedure like that. But there is, you know, some s simple things that we can do at the same time with uh, this procedure, like a surgical lip lift, where I literally raise the upper lip, which can give you a little bit more fullness. But you have to, 
be, you have to meet certain criteria and requirements for that procedure. It's not for somebody that has, you know, just a thin lip. It's more one that's kind of dropped down, lost elasticity over time, just like everything else in the body falls down and forward as we age, your lips can do the same thing. But usually when we rebuild the teeth with the implants in the bone, that adds a lot of lip support. So good good That's question. That's a great question. All right, next question, Doc, is that how long are the patients in the temporary teeth for? So you start from surgery day until beginning the final teeth is five and a half, six months. So we keep you in the temporary teeth until your bone has completely fused with the implants. The upper jaw, if you're doing both upper and lower, is the limiting factor in that. It takes five to six months for your bone in the upper jaw to fuse to the implants to be ready to start the final teeth. Also, we wait that long because we want your gums to totally heal. They're gonna shrink over the first four or five months, we know that. So when you, you know, if this is your gum level during your temporary teeth, the day of we do the surgery, the temporary teeth go in and just butt up and touch the gum tissue. As you heal, your gums are going to shrink. So you get a space that happens between the temporary and your gum. You're not going to like that. And you're going to tell me every time I see you that you don't like it like that you're the only person that it's happened to, and it's the first time I've heard that. But I'll tell you in the consult, you're gonna tell me that. I kind of predict the future, and people kind of laugh at me. <laughs> but then no doubt, about the, you know, the second post-op visit, patients still tell me that. <laughs> and I remind them, remember when I told you in the consult that this would happen? And like, oh yeah, I do remember you saying something about that. So we know that's gonna happen, but we wanna wait until all of that shrinkage is totally done. So when we build your final bridge or start that, it's made to contour to your new, happy, healthy gum level. That gives you your best final outcome that is possible. So we start making the final teeth at around the five and a half, six month mark. It takes somewhere four to five appointments, two to three weeks apart to make the final teeth. I mean, it's a process. And once you go through it, you'll see because everything's custom. Everything is designed, it's designed that way totally to benefit you. We could make them a lot faster, but you're probably not gonna get exactly what you want. So it's, we do it that way to where there's a couple trying stages, there's a couple times we have you come in because with the lab, we'll make something that we wanna fit in, make sure you like the way it looks, feels with your tongue and cheeks and lips, then they start the milling process. And then that's when the final teeth will be made. So there's a little process there. So all in, your temporary teeth are put in the day we do surgery. And typically you have those for about eight months. It's absolutely worth waiting for. A hundred percent. Ooh, some more questions, Doc. So it looks like there is a question about post-surgery bruising. Are there any visible bruising after surgery? It depends. Some people get it, some people don't. I mean, it's like anything else. You know, if I, we used to try to predict who would get most of the swelling and bruising and think it was only people who drank a lot of, you know, red wine, um, took a lot of vitamins or over-the-counter supplements that start with G, like ginseng and ginkgo, or any, any other um, blood thinner, Coumadin, some of the blood thinners, or even the supplements that can cause your blood to thin. We thought that mostly those patients would get the swelling and bruising, but it's just so random because I have patients that are, they've been on blood thinners for, long, for many years, they drink red, a glass of red wine every night, and I do this procedure and I'm telling them you're gonna have a lot of swelling and bruising, and they come back and, you told me I was gonna be swollen and bruised, I didn't get any. But then the next day I do a patient that was really quick and easy, young healthy patient, never been on a blood thinner, doesn't drink or smoke, and they come back and they say, Doc, you didn't tell me I was gonna look like a pumpkin for two or three days. <laughs> so it's totally random and it's some people get it, some people don't. I tell everybody, just expect it. If you do get swelling, it usually peaks at the second night, third morning, and then it starts to go down over the next couple of days pretty quickly. If you get bruising, that, most of that bruising goes away in a week, 
So we usually tell you somewhere about seven to 10 days for the total recovery, and which is one of the reasons I see you about 14 day, 10 to 14 days after, because usually all that's gone. <laughs> and you're happy when yeah, you come back for that, for that first visit. <laughs> Um, all right, so we have two more questions. It looks like if you are a smoker, um, do your implants turn yellow? So I would answer that as anything that would turn natural teeth darker can turn these teeth darker. More so in the temporary teeth, the acrylics, because they're a lot more porous and they absorb stains more. Um, in the zirconia stage, Zirconia, I would treat like if you've ever, ha if you have a porcelain crown or you know someone that's had a porcelain crown, it's very similar to that. So will smoking, coffee, tea, red wines stain it? Yes. It's not a lot, and, but the cool thing with zirconia is when you go in for your six months cleaning appointments, it's something that is typically very easy to polish off and get them back to that new stage. I think that concludes all of the questions yeah, that we've had right. coming in. And, and don't be scared. Like if you do have any other questions and we didn't get to them or you think of something, you know, after we're completely done, just call tomorrow. Talk to Allie, Shauna, um, or, um, you know, one of the other coordinators and they can definitely uh, get, you, get you an answer. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Yes. Oh, Doc, before you turn it over yes. to me, I think there was one more question. Um, Perfect. We mentioned zygomatic implants in the upper jaw, but a patient was wondering, are zygomatic implants possible in the lower jaw if they don't have enough bone? Um, no, we get asked that question a lot. So your, your zygoma is your cheekbone and it's not really part of the lower jaw. And your lower jaw, if you think about it, is the only bone that moves when you open and close. So if we anchored, you have to put lower jaw implants in the lower jaw. If we anchored them into the, to the zygomatic bone, that your jaw wouldn't move. Like it would be stuck, yeah. tied to your cheek. Yep. So no, we unfortunately we can't do those. But but even with that, I've still, I haven't really seen anyone that we couldn't do yeah. the implants on with this, the, the way we can angle some implants, even in somebody that has a lot of bone loss in the lower jaw. Lots of options. Absolutely. Uh, we highly encourage you to come out and schedule a consultation in our office um, so that you can have your own specific case discussed with Dr. Kirkpatrick to see if this is an option for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, yeah, guys. We had a good group. So thank you guys for being on here, and we look forward to seeing you for a consult.